ghastly furious with the FIA. It seems like the governing body of the F1 sport just cannot stop being at the center of attention for all the wrong reasons, but until now, all of the FIA's infamous talks weren't regarding the safety of the drivers. What happened at Suzuka really made the F1 drivers and the fans ask themselves whether the FIA has the ability to learn from its own mistakes. A driver could have been killed at the same track under the same circumstances as Jules Bianchi in 2014, and Gasly had a lot to say about this matter, calling the FIA for more responsibility for the accident that was escaped narrowly. Want to find out what the Frenchman had to say about his near-death experience? Stick around with us to find out more. Suzuka is known as a track that has very varying weather conditions. After three long years, the F1 caravan visited one of the driver's favorite tracks to race on due to the fact it resembles an old-school track with lots of corners that take lots of skill and knowledge to tackle. However, Suzuka was drenched in water, and the visibility on the track was very limited. Drivers weren't able to see more than a couple of meters ahead of them, and that is something that makes the race very challenging. It was also the main reason why the race was red flagged after lap three, due to the heavy rain making it impossible to drive, even on the full wet tires. However, prior to the red flag caused by both rain and Sainz's accident after the Spaniard aquaplaned and spun off into the barriers, there was a safety car that led the caravan. What was even more concerning and impossible to understand is the presence of the recovery vehicle, more precisely a tractor on the track, very near to the racing line. The tractor carried Sainz's vehicle to a safe place, but at that time both Sainz's car and the recovery vehicle were on the track while the other cars were passing them at a speed as big as 200 kilometers per hour. Out of all the drivers out there, Gasly was the one that was the closest to having a direct encounter with the vehicle, and the impaired visibility of the track made it kind of impossible to see the tractor from a far distance. Even if the track was perfectly clear and the weather was sunny, it would be yet again unacceptable for the FIA to launch a recovery vehicle on the track while the F1 cars are still on it. The 2014 death of Jules Bianchi is something that truly brought a dark mark onto the sport, and it was the first death caused by an F1 accident after Ayrton Senna's death in 1994. In 2014, there were three conditions that were directly at fault for Bianchi's crash with the recovery vehicle and they were track conditions, car speed, and the presence of a recovery vehicle. What's even more shocking is that all of these three conditions were present in Gasly's situation, with the exception of the crash and the accident actually happening, something we are all grateful for. It goes without saying that Gasly is very furious with the FIA, and the way they just launched a recovery vehicle out there after a driver lost his life in 2014 at the very same track in the very same conditions. Many have tried to blame Gasly for this potential accident mostly because he was driving over 200 kilometers per hour, but that doesn't add to the narrative that there was a recovery vehicle that was very close to the racing line, in a race that the vision of the drivers was pretty much non-existing. F1 drivers are familiar with the fact that accidents are very much bound to happen during wet conditions, and that is why their skill and expertise comes at a clutch when these conditions are met. Aquaplaning is something that can happen to every driver under wet conditions, just like it happened to Mick Schumacher and Carlos Sainz in Suzuka. But spinning off the circuit and hitting the barriers is one thing, while having nearly the same accident just like in 2014 due to a low organization point is something unacceptable. When talking about this incident, Gasly emphasized multiple times that luck was the only thing that saved him, and just a couple of meters made the difference between life and death. We lost Jules already. We all lost an amazing guy, an amazing driver, for the reasons that we know. Eight years ago, on the same track, in the same conditions, with a crane. Obviously, I got scared. Obviously, if I would have lost the car in a similar way, Carlos lost at the lap before. It doesn't matter the speed. 200 kilometers per hour, 100, I would have died. As simple as that. I don't understand. It's disrespectful to Jules, disrespectful to his family. All of us are risking our lives out there. We are doing the best job in the world, but what we are asking is to at least keep up safe. It's already dangerous enough. I'm just extremely grateful that I'm here today, and tonight I'm going to call my family and all my loved ones, and the outcome is what it is. I passed two meters from that crane, and if I was two meters to the left, I would have been dead," finished Gasly. Bianchi's father, Philippe, echoed Gasly and said on Instagram, 
No respect for the life of the driver, no respect for Jules's memory. Incredible. It goes without saying that this was one of the most shocking accidents that never actually happened, but the fact that the same conditions were there and mere luck was to decide whether or not a driver's life would have been put at risk goes to say that the FIA needs to do much, much better work when it comes to the safety of the drivers. Carlos Sainz also spoke about the conditions that the drivers met during the Suzuka GP and the fact that the governing body allowed a recovery vehicle onto the track. Even before safety car, we are going 100, 150 kilometers per hour, and still at those speeds we see nothing. So, if one driver decides to get a bit out of the racing line, has a small aquaplaning, hits a button on the steering wheel and gets a bit out of line and hits a tractor, it's over, no? The FIA has shared its verdict on this potential accident, saying that it has launched a thorough review of the events involving the deployment of recovery vehicles during the Japanese Grand Prix, adding, this is part of the common practice of analysis of all race incidents to ensure continual improvements of processes and procedures. Rest assured that the rest of the grid was also very disappointed with how the situation was presented to them at Suzuka. Sergio Perez also spoke about this matter, saying, That's the lowest point we've seen in the sport for years. What happened today just makes me so angry. I just hope ever in the sport we never get to see this situation ever again. We saw what happened here a few years ago with our friend Jules, and absolutely I don't care about what was the reason for that. It should never happen again, ever in any category. The track conditions in Suzuka were challenging, to say the least, and if any driver out there was to lose control for just one small bit, they would have been at direct risk to hit the tractor that was recovering Sainz's vehicle on the track. The speed would matter, that is true, but it doesn't change the fact that there is a recovery vehicle on the track, in conditions that are far away from perfect, and anyone could hit it just by doing a small, minor mistake. It goes to show that the FIA learned absolutely nothing when it comes to the safety of the drivers, and even though the tractor had its lights on, the impaired visibility was something that made it very hard for the drivers to recognize anything ahead of them. That is why Gasly saw the tractor while being less than a second away from it, and it's something that makes you think about whether or not he could have panicked in that split second and caused a crash. Karun Chanduk spoke about this accident, saying that although the FIA is mainly to blame for this close call situation, Gasly should bear some of the responsibility for driving 200 km per hour on a track that has impaired vision and is under safety car conditions. He's pushing on. You can listen here and he's going a lot faster than anyone else is on track. It's double-waved yellow flags and then the red. We know this from junior formula racing. You have to go at a speed at which you can be prepared to stop, and he is quite clearly going a lot quicker than anyone else was," said Chanduk. Paul DeResta also shared his opinion on Gasly's actions while the recovery track was on the grid, adding, I think when he looks back at his onboard camera, he's considerably quicker than the other cars passing that incident. With that being said, what do you think about Gasly's near-death incident with the recovery vehicle? Do you think that the FIA needs to take stronger action in situations like this one? Let us know in the comments below.